So the other day, Dr. Sanjay Gupta from CNN went on Joe Rogan's podcast, and after it aired, I saw a lot of right-wingers celebrating Joe's performance. So I thought maybe he actually made some good points during the conversation. But then I listened to the entire thing and checked into some of Joe's facts, and it turns out that he's actually even worse off than I thought he was before. Besides from the clip of Joe calling out CNN to Sanjay, there's two main clips that people are focusing on. The one where Joe brings up the myocarditis study about boys 12 to 15, and the other story that he brings up about the 19-year-old girl who supposedly died of complications due to her second COVID shot. So let's take a look at those clips that everybody on the right was praising Joe for, and then we'll take a look at the actual facts of the situation and see where they line up. Boys more at risk from Pfizer jab side effect than COVID studies suggested. U.S. researchers say teenagers more likely to get vaccine-related myocarditis than end up in the hospital with COVID. If you have a child and you read this, don't you think that you would be hesitant to vaccinate a child that would most likely cruise through COVID with no issues. But, but you have an impulse uh, to, well, um, to defend well, let me, vaccination in light of this data. Let, let, now, Sanjay clearly wasn't familiar with this new right-wing talking point, which is why he didn't do a great job of pushing back. But this study that Joe has referred to numerous times and keeps pushing has been widely criticized, and the data they use is highly suspect. First off, this study is a preprint that has not been peer-reviewed or accepted for publication by a scholar or any scientific journal. The study relies completely 100% on raw data from the VAERS database, which absolutely anyone can submit and has been completely bombarded with fake stories from anti-vaxxers. In fact, from the latest report from the CDC, which came out the same exact day as this podcast, they said out of the 403 million doses of the vaccine, they had 1,640 submissions of myocarditis to the VAERS website. But after looking into them, they found only 926 were valid. That's out of 403 million doses. Now, there's plenty of other criticisms of that study, and I'll link those down below, but even the very article that Joe uses to bring up that study talks about how the American data might be unreliable, and now that we know that it's just the VAERS raw data, which anybody can submit, we know it's unreliable. And the UK actually keeps their own numbers on myocarditis, which is kept by the UK medicine regulators, which, let's face it, is probably better than our shit numbers, and according to them, their rate of myocarditis is 6 per 1 million. And just to be clear, any death after someone gets the vaccine must be reported to the VAERS website. And as of now, the latest data after over 400 million doses of the vaccine, not one single death can be contributed to the vaccine. And one last thing on the risk reward of the vaccine versus getting myocarditis for young boys. The CDC study estimated that for every million second doses of the vaccine administered to boys 12 through 17, vaccination would prevent on average 5,700 cases of COVID-19, 215 COVID-19 hospitalizations, 71 ICU admissions, and two deaths. By comparison, there would be an expected about 56 to 69 cases of myocarditis and the risk was way lower for girls. Bottom line, at best, Joe is just way off on this one. He clearly hasn't read past the headlines. Again, we're talking 900 something total cases out of 402 million doses of the vaccine. The risk reward of getting the vaccine versus getting myocarditis isn't even close. But anyway, let's move on to the next story. She's 19. She had a heart heart transplant one ma month after developing what her doctors believe was myocarditis following her second dose of Moderna. So this, this what's really sad is she gets the heart transplant and then the immunosuppressant drugs mm. um, caused her to succumb to pneumonia and then she dies of pneumonia. I, you know, I... I mean, how do you just... There's no chance she would have died from COVID. You, I mean, a fucking an infinitesimally small chance. Now, with the first story that we covered, I could see how if you're just bad at doing research or lazy like he clearly is, even though he's one of the biggest podcasts in the world, I could see how if you read a couple of the headlines which kind of misrepresent the story, how you could think things are a lot worse in that situation than they actually are. But with this... It's kind of hard to see how he's just not outright pushing propaganda. So when I saw the source Joe had pulled up there, the Defender Children's Health Defense News and Views, I've never heard of it, so I figured let's Google it and see who's behind it. And it was the worst possible person for reliability in this field. Yes, if you can believe it, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is the founder, CEO, and head contributor to Children's Health Defense News and Views. He's the OG anti-vaxxer. 
He was anti-vax before it was cool. And his site that Joe decided was a good source of information for his millions of viewers is full of ways you can give him money, including buying his new book, The Real Anthony Fauci. Now, just the fact that Robert F. Kennedy, the king of anti-vaxxers, is giving you a story about vaccine safety, you should probably be second-guessing it. And his name is plastered all over every single story on this site. So I'm not sure how Jamie and Joe both missed it, but I think it's pretty safe to say if Robert F. Kennedy is telling you something about vaccines, you should probably believe in the opposite. And surprise, surprise, in this situation, you would be right. Now, according to Kennedy's RAG publication, Simone Scott underwent a heart transplant one month after developing what her doctors believe was myocarditis following her second dose of Moderna. Now, there's a little bit of wordplay in there, but even that is very misleading. Kennedy's source for this piece is a tweet thread from anti-COVID loon Alex Berenson, who's become a mainstay on the right for COVID misinformation. Alex Berenson's tweets are not only the source in Kennedy's piece, but also the source in a right-wing publication called The College Fix, which both claim that while Scott's doctors have not fully confirmed her cause of death, they both say it appears that Scott suffered from myocarditis, which they heavily imply was due to the vaccine. But this just isn't true. In fact, in two different local news reports published the same day as Kennedy's piece and after Burnson's tweets, the doctors hadn't recommended anything because they were still running tests. In fact, the family said, we still haven't gotten any answers in terms of what she had because her heart hasn't tested positive for anything, Valerie said, which is her mother. Her body hasn't tested positive for any virus. As of right now, Simone's death remains a medical mystery, but her relatives and friends remain dedicated to seeking answers. Now, I could be wrong, but I went through several different sources, statements from the family. I didn't see anybody blaming the vaccine. This girl died back in June. The latest CDC data about all this stuff just came out earlier this week on Wednesday, and it didn't say anything about deaths from myocarditis or the vaccine in general. But watch here when Joe, when Jamie, brings up to Joe that there might be another side to this story. By the way, was that 19 year old? I'm really curious about the story of the 19 year old who needed a heart transplant. Oh, yeah, if you have that, yeah, yeah, Jamie. Yeah, yeah, if you can. So, yeah, I found one place that said it was claiming it was due to that, and then I found other places that said that the doctors didn't know exactly yeah, why she Yeah, the had family died. says that it's 100% from the vaccine, that she got vaccinated right afterwards. And Did you notice when Jamie brought up that, hey, there might be another side to the story, and on this one, the doctors said, oh, no, 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 no. The family said it's 100% that this is how it went down. It, it happened right after she took the vaccine. Like, first of all, I didn't know the family was doctors. I didn't know that's how it worked. Second off, really, did, did the family say that? Because I read several different sources that all had statements from the family and not a single one of them had them mentioning anything about the vaccine. They all said things like, we're not sure what happened. We're just trying to find out what happened. It's a medical mystery. We're still waiting on tests stuff like that. Now I could be wrong, I didn't dive way down in the depths of Duck Duck Go or whatever, but seeing as Joe was pretty much wildly off base on everything we covered in this video and was pretty much off base the entire conversation he had with Sanjay, I don't really think he deserves the benefit of the doubt on this one. In closing, I think this clip sums up everything you need to know about Joe Rogan. You would still recommend people get vaccinated. I would definitely recommend people who are vulnerable get vaccinated. So, so, and, and definitely people who are thinking about getting vaccinated and think that it's the right option for them to get vaccinated. But I'm not a person that should recommend anything health. No, I, 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 I get that. I think that sometimes people will, will because a lot of people listen to you. And That's they may a problem. Say, See, the thing is, like, <laughs> I'm not trying to get people to. I'm not telling people to listen to me. Yeah. I'm not telling people to follow my suggestions. I'm just talking. And it's it's become this thing where millions of people listen. And it's not, I mean, it wasn't by design. I know. Right? And the idea that I'm supposed to change how I talk about stuff now because it's really popular, well, then guess what? It won't be popular anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Rogan in a nutshell. I'm going to put out all this information and preach it to you as gospel. But then if I screw up or get called out, hey, I'm just a jackass comedian. What do I know? The problem is, Joe, that just doesn't cut it anymore. That doesn't fly. Like, you have a giant platform, millions of people listen to you every week. You can't just say, well, oh, I'm an idiot, what do I know? It just doesn't work that way anymore. Just in this episode, you platformed 
the largest, one of the biggest anti-vaxxers I know, and put out a story on his website as good information. How many millions or hundreds of thousands or even tens, if it's just tens of thousands, are going to go to his website and fall down some insane rabbit hole? You had Brett Weinstein on your podcast who said if ivermectin was readily available, that COVID would be over. You're responsible for that. I mean, Joe, nobody's asking you to be right 100% of the time. Nobody's expecting that. What we are asking is when you put out serious information, do a little more research to make sure it's good information. That's it. I mean, you did just get $100 million from Spotify. Maybe put a little of that money towards hiring one or two more researchers so you can put out more good information when it comes to important stuff. Because I've listened to Joe for a very long time, and I can tell you the only time he knew what he was talking about in this entire conversation was when he was talking about weed and Floyd Mayweather. And honestly, that's fine. I, I still like listening to his MMA podcasts because when he does them, he knows what he's talking about. He knows combat sports, and that's fine. Clearly, he doesn't know the ins and outs of virology, which is okay. But don't, you know, put out all this massive amount of information about getting vaccinated and myocarditis and all these words that you just learned last week because it's just bad for the world. And you say the podcast won't be as entertaining. Well, maybe you got to kind of balance between actively helping destroy the world or having a, a good podcast. Like, you know, maybe it can be a 7 out of 10 and you can destroy the world less. Maybe the profit can come down a little bit and we can survive and not have a civil war. But yeah, that's going to do it for me. It's my first longer video in a while. I'm going to try to get back into a groove. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, hit the like button, leave a comment down below because I'm trying to revive my channel back from the dead. Uh, links to everything down in the description, more stuff on the myocarditis study that he got wrong. It was a bunch more shit that I didn't cover. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. Really, really appreciate it, and peace out.